This is the setup. They got us right next to D. They got us right next to the OG. They got us right next to the Optic Boys over here. And then this. Look at this beautiful venue. Look at this beautiful venue. Timmy Tenders is somewhere down here, brother. <laughs> Yo, what is up, Z fam? Welcome to a new video. In today's video, we are bringing you a She that have been living under a rock, 200 plus content creators went out to LA just the past week, and uh, we got to play both Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone, not 2, Warzone 2.0, a little bit early so that we could, you know, talk with the devs a little bit. Get, get your guys' opinion, get it out there, content for the for the fans to see so everyone can give their opinions as well so the devs can, you know, have the public's opinion to kind of go off of, right? Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that they have that are set in stone. A lot of things, usually, when it comes to video games, sometimes they'll have these ideas that seem like they work on forever and then they feel like they can never... They, they feel like they could probably not let go of those things, which is slightly understandable, but also not really to me to be honest it's like if you want your game to work i feel like you need to drop the ego from time to time but there is a lot of things that i'm sure are going to be tweaked today i'm going to talk about the pros the cons the things that i noticed while i was playing the game because i was one of those creators that got invited out to play uh in la it was a phenomenal trip by the way it was my first time in la i freaking loved it <laughs> It, it was a, it was a great trip it was beautiful it was a lot of fun i got to hang out with all the people that i get to game with on a regular basis and uh all of that i'll get the sappy cheesy shit out of the way is not possible without you guys so thank you so very much i freaking love you this has been a dream line since i was a kid to get to go out and, and get invited by call of duty to go and, and and play the game early it was just it was incredible it was a dream come true so uh without further ado let's jump into the good the bad and the ugly for zone 2.0 and before we get into it if you enjoy my thoughts on today's video i obviously want this to be a discussion so please please spam the comments aggressively i'll be in there i want to look at your guys ideas your thoughts on what you saw from the gameplay and what you think could improve the game a little bit and uh yeah before i get into all of these topics i want to preface all of this by saying i only played this for two hours i cannot wait to get my hands on this for a full week two weeks month to really get some time into it and have a much much more solidified idea of what i what i actually feel about this game and how i actually feel a lot of this stuff i didn't even, a lot of the content i didn't get to fully fully sink my teeth into uh obviously you know it's a it's a it was a day event where you got to go out and play for a few hours which is better than not nothing but obviously i couldn't get to everything so and the stuff that are, is new and that i might have been a little bit iffy about at first my mind has kind of I've, I've given a couple days that's why i didn't want to put this video out right after playing the map i wanted to think about this stuff a little bit you know some of the the changes that they added to this game that i'm going to talk about in the video i actually didn't like at first but now have i'm slowly but surely changing my mind a little bit in the sense that at first, people are obviously going to not like certain things that are that they don't really know how to do. And they're going to be like, oh, I wish this was different. I wish it was like the old looting system or I wish it was like this, blah, blah, blah. And the reason being most of the time is going to be because it's new and it's fresh and the muscle memory of it is not there yet. But give it some time, give it no joke a week or two, and you are already going to be the muscle memory. Once that kicks in for the main chunk of the player base. I think people are going to feel much better about a lot of these changes. So anyway, going with this with a grain of salt, I haven't got my hands on the game for a full solid, solid week or two of sessions where I can have a good idea of what I really feel about this. So make sure you go into this video understanding that. So first off, I want to touch on the new map. Now, the new map is exactly what I was hoping for. I don't know about you guys, but the new map feels felt incredible. I know, well, I know you guys didn't get to play it, but from what you saw, it looked and felt incredible. It was a massive scale game. 
Uh, it, 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 it had many different f vibes of Verdansk in the sense that you could go downtown, you got buildings all around you, you, you know, you, it, instead of like the Caldera, you know, jungle type vibe, I love this city, this war-torn city vibe that, that we have with this new game. There were tons of great POIs, and most importantly, something that they did similar to Blackout, which I didn't play much of, but I know that they did in Blackout, was Treyarch brought, brought back a lot of the OG maps from Black Ops 1, and, you know, you know Nuketown, and, and all these different, different maps, and put them as different POIs on that map. They did the same thing with this map, which is exactly, this checks off one of the things that I was truly hoping for with Warzone 2.0. I was tr I was really hoping that they were going to take advantage of that nostalgic factor, but, but not overkill it. Now, I'm sure you guys can understand what I mean. Like, there's a difference between there's a fine line. It's like the Goldilocks thing, right? Like it's not, it's not too hot, not, not too much, not too little. It's in the right spot in the sense that obviously if they would have just copy pasted every single map from the game and just made it the whole Modern Warzone 2 map, it would have probably not been that great. It honestly would not be it, at all. You know, you need the fresh new stuff mixed in, intertwined with a little sprinkle of nostalgia. So if you guys notice, they had both Terminal, they had High Rise, they had some other POIs on there as well. But those two notable ones, those were the ones that I was, that were on my wish list. I was like, listen, they need to sprinkle those in there on the map somewhere. That's exactly what they did. The Circles is another great thing that I really liked. From the live broadcast, you could tell they touched on it a little bit, how circles were going to work in Warzone 2.0. Now, I think they can work the same all the way through to the end of the game, where it's just circle, 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 circle. I could be wrong about this. I just think this is what I heard, that it can go big circle, and then smaller circle, and then smaller circle, and then obviously, you know, like the moving zone or whatever, and it ends. Uh, but then there are, I think it's like the possibility that it can also split off into multiple different zones, where there's a bunch of red zone in between, and you've got a bunch of different little mini fights like they had said in mini little war zones going on uh, all over the map now this for me was really cool i thought this was a super cool idea only because it's going to change the flow of the game which is what we want we don't want the same exact thing we don't want even though we want war zone 2 and we want it to have similarities we don't want it to be identical and i think it's going to provide lots of new engagements and fights that we would have never had before for instance I put myself in a situation of a competitive player with like, let's say I'm playing in a 2v2 kill race tournament style where we're just racing for as many kills as possible. And we find ourselves in this three split zone. And we happen to be in the zone where there's no one at all. And maybe our opponents are in the zone where there's a ton of people. Or all of us are out of the right zone and there's a ton of people in the smaller zone. But we don't know. The cool thing about this is the zones seem to be slightly close enough to where you could probably hop in a vehicle with a gas mask, some stims or whatever, and just drive into the next zone and kind of get over there. Obviously, you're going to burn through some plates, might burn through a gas mask, might burn through whatever. And maybe sometimes it's not possible at all. But like I said, it kind of makes for some cool, like some new, fresh gameplay. With the whole new looting system, which I'm now going to use this as a transition into that topic, the looting system, you can now carry more than one gas mask, you can carry more than one kill streak, you can carry tons of different stuff, and what that adds up to is, you know, you can make a lot of these cool different plays where you might need to go out of the zone for a while and try to get over to this other zone, and you carry two uh, extra gas masks and you're good to go. The looting system, I uh, this is one of those things that I said at the beginning of the video that I was a little bit iffy on at first, but my mind is changing slightly. The looting system is a little bit similar to Apex in a way, in the sense that you could still loot stuff on the ground like you can in normal Warzone. You could still loot plates off the ground, ammo, guns, cash, etc. But when you go to open a loot crate, it opens an interface. And it opens an interface with four different slots, or there might be different chests that are higher value or whatnot that have more slots, I'm not too sure. But when you're looting, it did feel a little clunky. And the one thing about it that I said that after I gave it some time, I, I thought about it was this might just be one of those things where I haven't gotten to play the game enough to really feel out how to use that looting system and feel good about it. So I think that's something that I need to sort of put as like a to be determined type thing. I don't know if I'm fully set on if I like it or dislike it. I'm kind of in the middle right now. I got to just get my hands on it again. One thing I can know for sure is that it did feel clunky. This was a beta. This wasn't isn't the main game. These are all the types of things that they were hoping to see in our all these content creators playing the game so that they can make the changes necessary. The looting, regardless of if I like it or dislike it due to just muscle memory and not it not feeling the same as Warzone 1, it still needs some work. There's no doubt about it. It still needs some work. It felt kind of clunky at times, and 
yeah but i'm sure those are the types of things and little bugs that they'll be you know weeding out as uh as we lead up to the release date and to go hand in hand with that looting system the backpack is a new addition to warzone and what i said about the gas mask that you could carry multiple gas masks or multiple kill streaks is that and that's that's a fact you could also carry multiple things of equipment multiple different kinds of ammo and you have a certain amount of slots now this is one thing i've played a lot of apex and i'm gonna you're gonna hear me talk about apex a little bit because i feel like some similarities come uh there's some things in the in the new game that the looting system reminds me a bit of apex um i do not that's one of my least favorite things about apex i don't really i'm not a massive fan of the backpack system in apex legends and they're bringing it to warzone now i can get used to it and it is what it is and whatever but i honestly am not a massive massive fan of it i'd prefer if there was like maybe one set backpack that and there wasn't like a like a golden backpack that you can find that's just tons of extra loot but i do see how this is a br and to the casual player base that is a fun little thing you know just like finding a gold scar back in the day in fortnite having those different things that you could like get super excited about i understand uh it's just the way it makes the flow of the game a little bit different because now instead of holding tons and tons of ammo of ar sniper rocket all this different stuff like you can in warzone one you can only carry a specific amount so let's say you are running an ar and an S smg loadout you uh, well <laughs> there's no loadouts in the technical there's no loadouts in the game loadout drops but i mean we'll get into that in a second but let's say you're running with a particular uh loadout that is uh an smg and an ar and you are carrying all this smg and ar ammo but you want to swap to a sniper that you find on the ground when you swap to that sniper you do not have ammo for it i mean it might spawn with some ammo but you're not going to have all of that you know, you're not going to have all that in your kit. You're going to have a ton of AR and SMG ammo. So you're going to have to drop some of that. And, you know, again, this is similar to Apex. I like it on Apex. It's not too bad on Apex. I'm kind of cool with it and I'm used to it. And like I said, this is one of those things that I feel like I need more time with. I need more time to get comfortable with the looting system. I need more time to just play the game. If you're seeing lots of people uploading your videos right now talking about, you know, how much they hate the game or how much they love the game, I feel like we need to just, regardless of your opinion, whether you like it or dislike it or you're in the middle or whatever, we just need more time. That's no question about it we need more time we need to get our hands on it more often or more and uh so we can have a better idea of, of all this stuff because i feel like a lot of the issues that are arising also are just not the muscle memory not being there but obviously there also are a lot of issues that are actual issues like another topic the ai system the ai system i do not like i don't like ai systems in any br at all i just don't find it satisfying again i am coming from a different standpoint i'm coming from a sweaty i sweat my balls off all day on this game type mindset not the mindset of i just come home kick my feet up i got an hour or 30 minutes to play a couple games and i'm gonna hop off for the night you know what i mean i i know that you know on fortnite for instance maybe that's fun for the kids you run into a bot you kill the bot and it's whatever but to me it's just like not satisfying knowing that i just killed an ai or it could be a player and you know obviously in this game you could tell decently well not well enough who the ais are and who the bot and who the real players are but i just don't like them at all the way they did on warzone is usually when you're going to like open a you know when you're trying to get the specialist tokens at the top of peak for instance uh and you have to kill a wave of or and you have a wave of like ai come down you know stuff like that i don't care about that much it's more so the fact that the map was so massive there was only 102 players which i don't know if that's going to be higher or not we're gonna have to wait to find out but uh you, you you know you jump in and you i can tell you that for every game that i played and you're probably seeing it in this gameplay here i killed more ai than i did run into actual legitimate players in gunfights and it was very boring to do that over and over and over again and another thing is yes you can tell who the bots are and the real players are after a second but at first you kind of can't tell completely because they do ping differently on the map i'm pretty sure they have like a different circ red circle on them but they still like uh, and obviously after you see them for a second maybe just staring at a wall you're like okay that's probably an ai but still i feel like there needs to be a greater distinction between real players and ai in the game mate i don't care if they're wearing a freaking construction jacket or vest i don't give a shit just something to make it a little bit more apparent and i think the most important thing they need to do of all if they're not going to get it out of the game because like i said sometimes when they're stuck on certain ideas they're probably not going to take it out if they aren't going to take it out at least at the minimum please decrease the amount i can almost say that every shack little mini shack not even every poi 
every little shack I would roll up to in my vehicle, there would almost be AI at every single one of them. And then what does that do? It leads to me having to kill them to loot that specific area, giving away my location, giving away my area. I can't really play the game I want to play. And it's just tedious to have to fight AI all game long. It's not fun. I don't enjoy it. Maybe you guys do. I don't know. The gun play, the way the mechanics of the movement and the guns work in the game is different than Warzone 1. Now, if you started playing Call of Duty with Warzone, then you probably aren't going to... I'm not going to say that you're not going to enjoy the new movement system. I don't want to say that at all. You, you very well could. Maybe you like the traditional vibe. But I know for a lot of people that have played Call of Duty forever, I've played Call of Duty since Call of Duty 4, I have been very used to a more... We're going to a more traditional movement system in the sense that sliding and dolphin diving are in this game. But they aren't as useful as they used to be now again let me before we go into this i saw some clips on twitter and i saw people i haven't played the game since because i also i don't have a ps5 and i'm waiting till next weekend to play the open beta for all platforms um i haven't touched the game again but i know some people have figured out a way some sweaty little goats on uh, optic gaming by the name of shotzi and skump and i'm sure other people found this out as well uh figured out a way to actually slide cancel all right you uh. Bro, what the f that actually looked like a slide can't some weight. Boy. I told you. Because I haven't tried this myself, I again I don't know how useful this is gonna end up being. But regardless of that, I feel like the traditional movement system is going to be more of a part of this game, which again, I need more time. I don't know if I dislike it. I don't know if I like it. I don't really have an opinion. I feel like I am going to play the game either way. And I feel like, um, I don't know. I'll get back to you guys on the movement and all that kind of stuff in the future, in future videos. The gunplay, on the other hand, felt pretty smooth. It felt great. It felt clean. I liked a lot of the weapons that I was using in the beta. Obviously, we didn't have access to every single gun. And obviously, I didn't even get around to every single gun. But a lot of the SMGs and the airs, which is mainly what I was rocking, felt very, very clean in both the multiplayer and in Warzone 2.0. Uh, so... On that front, I don't really have much to say about it. It felt pretty clean. The thing about it, though, is uh, with gunplay and all that kind of stuff, comes along the thought of loadouts. Now, this is obviously a massive topic that everyone is going to be talking about, uh, which just be, and mainly due to the fact that Warzone was such a staple because of the loadout. I'm not saying that loadouts made Warzone what it was, but I think it had a solid influence. I think a lot of people kind of liked the fact that it wasn't like traditional BRs where you go around the map, you loot your guns, you loot your meds, you loot your, I mean, you know, you still have to loot plates and stuff, but you loot your, all, all this, these, these guns and your loadout and you find attachments on the floor like PUBG style. And that's more of like a traditional BR, which I, you know, Apex as well, which again, I don't mind that much. There are other BRs that I've liked. Uh, I will say that I maybe am leaning more towards loving the loadout, but this is the cool thing and this is the cool change. Loadouts aren't technically fully gone. Uh, I think the new system, the way it's going to work is that you're going to be able to rank up your guns, you're going to be able to level them up and put attachments on the guns in the pregame lobby for all of these weapons. And then when you go to a buy station, which I'll touch on buy stations after this topic, you can go into the buy station and select the gun that you want and buy that. And I'm pretty sure it will come with all the attachments on it. Now, they are pretty expensive from what I saw in the beta. They might, they might mess with those uh they might mess with those prices in the future we will see but if you want to get your full loadout it is going to be expensive it'll be like over 10 grand just for one player to get both of their guns again this is just gonna make the game feel different and flow differently it doesn't mean i'm against it completely it doesn't mean i'm for it it just I'm, i gotta wait and see how it feels uh one thing that i also noticed that is that apparently uh that i heard is that if you are adding more attachments to the guns they may cost more so you might need to find a balance there again i'm not certain if that's a fact but i have heard that now with buy stations just like you can buy your guns i'll talk a little bit about the ui uh with the buy stations ui uh i wasn't really a massive fan of it i felt like it was a, again a little bit scattered like i continue to say over and over again i'm probably like a broken record i still need more time with it it, it maybe i'll be able to get to a point where i'm faster with it and i can move, maneuver around it a little bit but it still did feel a little bit bigger it maybe would be cool if they had like a drop down system like a like a like a like one section where you just you scroll down and you click on it and then it opens up a bigger menu with the things you need it had a few things in there it had plates it had uh you know kill streak stuff like that and each buy station from what i also could tell 
is that you could only buy one of the kill streaks in there and then after that kill streak was bought out of that buy station you no longer can have that now that's kind of cool I, i'm cool for that kind of change i'm cool for less uavs and less kill streaks on the map you might have to just get them in different ways and the first person to certain buys will get access to those things that's pretty cool it'll 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 end up uh just creating a different style of game a little bit with with, with all, when it comes to hitting buy stations and whatnot. Uh, but those were the really the only changes I saw, and I would like to see it just be, again, I'd like to see the overall UI feel better and less clunky. But again, a lot of that I feel like comes from just my own personal not having enough time using it. Now, the plating system uh, was a little bit different as well. When you spawn in and you jump out of the plane for the first time, you spawn in with two plates on your character. And if you find a satchel, you can then carry a third plate. Now... I'm not a massive fan of this change just due to the simply due to the fact that I'm not a massive fan of tiered armor that much. You know, I don't like the fact that, you know, maybe you could end up being in a situation where you're trying to fry someone and, and something that'll happen in, in, in Call of Duty games. Let me let me just do a social experiment with you guys and you can tell me whether you have felt this before. Sometimes when you go from different COD to different COD and you play them, uh, let's say you play a COD for a whole year and then you play another COD the next year and the TTK is is different. Maybe it's a little bit slower, maybe it's a little bit faster, whatever it may be, it's different. Something that you might have noticed throughout the years is when you go from that COD to the other one, you'll notice that you're either shooting too many bullets or you're shooting too few bullets and you're like, oh shit, I meant to kill him there and I stopped shooting because I thought I would have killed him. That's just because of the muscle memory from the last game you played is a little bit there and you need some time to catch up. Now, the thing about the plate system is that there wasn't really a good way to tell if someone had the third plate on or not. So you might go to shoot someone that has two plates on or has three plates on and you expect that they have two and you're going to shoot them for the amount of bullets that you think will get to uh, a full kill and then they've got that extra plate and this is going to cause some weird stuff uh i don't know how much i've i don't know how to really feel about it i don't uh really like also how when you are trying to plate up and run away from enemies something that is going to just shorten the skill gap quite a bit uh, is just the overall, just the movement system as a whole, it, which again is, it's, it's, I'm okay with learning a whole new movement system and getting used to that. But something that happened every time you would play it up that was very annoying that I noticed was when I would try to run away. Something that you would notice a lot of good players do in Warzone is they'll, if, especially if you're playing solo squad, solo duo, solo trio, you're taking on more than one enemy at a time. Usually you get into that gunfight, you're going to lose some health, you're going to lose some plates, and you need to re. You know, you need to replenish that a little bit before you get into the next gunfight. So what what do you do? You you, you take a gunfight, you you gun one guy, you lose, let's say, two or three plates, and then you dip around a corner and you while you're hitting plates, and then you come out and you reach out again and you hit them from a different angle, whatever it may be. In this game, when you hit your plates, your character slows down to a walk. And I hated that because I would be fighting someone. I would be like, I instinctually go to be like, okay, it's time to plate up. And I want to like finesse this person and get away for a second and get full health and then come back and reach out. And I am a slug. So, you know, again, this is something that I hope I can see them uh, end up tweaking, uh, making it so that you, your character can be full sprint uh, while you are putting on plates. It would be nice. Um, another thing about the backpack and the whole looting system uh, thing is the fact that you could hold multiple different kinds of equipment. So you could hold a, there were there were times where I'd be holding a Semtex and I would go to throw that Semtex and I would be holding a grenade and I'd be cooking it and I'd be like, wait a second, I thought I picked up a Semtex and I did pick up a Semtex. I just had it in my inventory and uh, my frag grenade was was prioritized over that Semtex for that particular fight and I threw a frag and if I threw again it would would have been the Semtex and maybe I could have selected which one I wanted to throw first again I need more time with the setup but that is kind of how the looting system is going to work you can carry multiple different types of ammo but you could also stack your whole backpack full of plates so you can have eight you can have more than eight plates you can have a ton of extra plates but at the cost of less places to have ammo and less kill streaks to be able to hold now those are the types of things that I actually am kind of you know, even talking about it now, I actually kind of think it's cool. Like I, my mind, like I said, my mind is always changing about this stuff. I'm thinking about it all the time. It's so fresh in our minds that I'm, you know, the more I talk about it, the more I think about it, the more, you know, I, I start to have a more solid idea of how I feel about it. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of cool. You know, having the, it's going to provide a new, just some, a new fresh way to play the game. It's going to be, you have to think a little bit more about what you are looting and how you are looting. So that's kind of cool. I got two last things to talk about before we end the video. And one of those things are the new Gulag. The new Gulag is probably one of the things that I can say I'm not 
really a fan of, even though I haven't played it enough. I can already tell that I can just tell you from just, and again, this is just me being a sweaty little sweat. I don't like the fact that I have a random opponent. If you got, let me explain how the Gulag works first for those of you guys that don't know. So the Gulag works now in a 2v2 format instead of a one-on-one -on -one to fight for your life back. You get dropped into a Gulag with a random opponent. It doesn't have to be your teammate. It can, you don't have to wait in the Gulag until your teammate dies as well. You could be put in with just some random person on the map and you either kill your opponents and you get back or you or there's also now instead of the flag that spawns in the middle, a key that spawns in the middle that you can grab and go open the door, I think on the enemy side to get out of the Gulag instead of having to kill them. So, you know, I think obviously the key and the door and all that kind of stuff is cool, but I definitely would prefer a one on one. Uh, the Gulag was cool in the sense that there was lots of different, uh, I liked the feel of the Gulag. There was also loot on the ground. You could pick up different guns. You could pick up, you know, you start with a pistol and you whatever. I kind of thought that was cool, uh, but I don't know, man. I feel like certain things, yes, you want to innovate and you want to change, but, you know, maybe not fully, fully change. I think the Gulag was such a revolutionary. I think so many people, that is one of the staples. Just like how I said, loadout is one of the staples. The Gulag is one of the biggest staples with Warzone. The OG Gulag in particular, just so amazing. Such a great idea to be able to fight for your life back. It's kind of annoying when you have a random person that you don't know their skill level. They could be a full on sweat and you just get carried out of the Gulag and that's awesome. But there's the luck factor that you also get a complete Timmy Jimmy and then you're uh, 1v2ing or something. And, 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 you know, again, I need to play the game a little more, but I think the one-on-one -on -one aspect I liked a little bit more uh, cool with the key, cool with the door, all that kind of like getting out of there like that. I think that's cool, but I don't know really how to feel about the 2v2. And last but not least, I think one of the coolest things that a lot of people have been asking for a very long time. And no, it's not the FOV slider on console, which is being added by the way, if you didn't already know that, uh, which is awesome. Big W for the console community. Uh, proximity chat. It is in many other past BRs and it can provide phenomenal content. I'll play a quick clip of my boy Bobby and Nick Merckx to prove that point. What's up, Excuse please? me. You ready for these fucking Excuse me. Hey, Bobby, you ready? I'm you talking you, shit son. about my mustache. Lay, lay you talking shit about my mustache. Lay down your mustache. Lay down your mustache. Lay down your mustache. Lay down your I'm gonna put you in the dirt, Bobby, for real. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I got proximity shower thing. <laughs> Bro, proximity chat's lit. <laughs> proximity chat is just a cool ha thing to have in there because you can turn it off if you don't want it. You can have it on if you want it and you want to just have funny moments like that one. And it's going to be great just for content creation in general. I think a lot of content creators like myself are going to really love the proximity chat because it's going to, going to, it's going to provide so many funny moments and memorable moments that are just awesome. One thing I didn't know how to feel about it completely was that it's going to give away positions a lot of the time. And now, uh, and I also found like a bit of a bug with it, which I'm sure they'll fix uh, with the full release of the game. But I also think the proximity chat sometimes was glitching out and even working for your teammates. So I would find when I'm talking in game chat that I couldn't hear my teammates if I was a certain distance away, I needed to be close to them. I don't think that's intentional. I hope it's not intentional. It's kind of weird sometimes that was happening. It wasn't always happening. Um, but yeah, the proximity chat for other players though, are going to give away positions. Let's say you and your little friend Timmy and Jimmy and Billy are all sitting in a, a nice area and you're holding down this building and uh, you are talking to each other. You're trying to calm about your next position you're going to move to or whatnot. You are giving your position away. Now, people have to be very close to you for that to happen, but still, it's kind of giving that away. So, you know, like I said, it's not, you don't have to use it. It's a, it's a cool thing that's in the game that is going to be funny sometimes. I don't think it's the biggest deal ever. I think it's a nice thing to have in the game as an option because you can choose to use it or you choose not to use it. It's totally fine. Anyway, guys, those were just some of my initial thoughts with the game. I barely touched on, I didn't even go in depth on everything at all. These are kind of just the main things I wanted to talk about with you guys and my main initial thoughts. But again, like I said, take this all with a grain of salt because once once I get my hands on the game, November come November 16th, your boy's going to be putting in ridiculous hours to make sure that I get you guys all the information you need to know about the game and how my actual thoughts are on it then. Once I have a good feel for the movement system, once I have a good feel for the looting, for the gunplay, all of that stuff, 
I'll be able to come with a revised video, which I probably will come out with. I'll probably come out with a two, a version two of this video once I get my hands on it for real. Anyway, guys, I love it all very much. Make sure you comment down below. I would love to keep the discussion going in the comments on how you feel about the gameplay. I'll catch you in the next one. Make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed. Please, it would mean the world. Please hit the like button. Also, subscribe.